Hey everybody, Tuesday, February 19th here, and what I have in front of me are my tomato seedlings. If you've watched my most recent garden update video, you'll know that I spent the past week and a half in Costa Rica, and before I left Costa Rica, I started my tomato seedlings, hoping that one of these jiffy greenhouses could hold the moisture in well enough to keep these jiffy pods moist enough to germinate my seedlings without drying out. It was a bit of a risk to do that because when you don't open up your greenhouse dome for 10 days, you get uh, risks for fungal overgrowth or bacteria growth, and uh, you have risks for the plants getting really leggy because you're not able to take them outside. I was forced to do this in a window. And as you can see, some of my tomatoes are starting to get very leggy, and as a result, they need to be up potted before they get their true leaves, which is when I'd really prefer to up pot my tomatoes. The nice thing about tomatoes is the fine hairs that you see on the stems of tomatoes, zoom in here for you, these will actually turn into roots. So I have the ability to bury the, the plants up very, very high and then increase the root system. What you can also see here is that it appears that due to the persistent moisture in here, I'm starting to get some damping off. And what damping off is, it's a fungal disease where it eats away at the stems of the tomatoes. So it looks like these plants right here are infected. You can kind of see how very thin um, at the soil level the plants are starting to get. So that's not a good sign right there. So what I have to do is I have to thin these out and I have to pot them in a sterile soil and I have a sterile potting mix outside. Um, now sterile potting mix, if you're starting your seeds indoors, is what you want to use because there's no organic, uh, there's not a lot of organic matter in there. Um, there's no active living soil microbiome. So. Uh, for the temporary seed starts, keeping them indoors, it's important that you use a sterile seed mix. The only issue that you may have with using a seed mix is they may have fungus gnat eggs that are dormant in them. So what I'm doing to combat that is I have on my stove here, that is a pot of boiling water. So I'm going to kill the fungus gnat eggs by dumping that boiling water into the seed mix. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to do that. All right, so in this five gallon Lowe's bucket, I have half a bag of this Jiffy organic seed starting mix. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take that pot of boiling water that you just saw inside of, the, uh, inside of my house, boiling on the stove, and I'm gonna dump that in this seed starting mix. I'm gonna do half at a time, and then I'm going to stir this boiling hot water throughout the seed starting mix. And that is going to help kill the fungus gnat eggs that may have overwintered inside that bag. Now, there's a, there's a two-prong approach for doing this. You want to kill the fungus gnat eggs, but you also don't want to work with completely dry seed starting mix. You have to pre-moisten the soil for it to effectively absorb water. And there's kind, of a, there's kind of a science to this. You don't want to uh, make it so wet that it's hard to handle, but you also don't want to leave it bone dry. So you should make it damp, and it kind of comes with experience uh, for how it should look and feel. So this may be just a little bit too wet, a little bit wetter than what I want. So I'm going to add just a little bit of extra soil to it, just to dry it out a little bit, but there's still enough residual heat in here that it'll continue to cook the soil. So I'm gonna mix that up really well. And now what I want to do is, I want this to come back down to about room temperature, get it down to around 90 degrees or so. You don't want it to be very hot because if you put your plants in really hot mix, you are going to cook your plants. So I have this sitting in my garage, which is, you know, 50 something degrees, because it was a really cold day today. So I'm going to let this sit on the cool concrete to cool off, 
and we'll probably be able to work with it in about an hour or so. All right, while my seed mix is cooling out in the garage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin my seedlings down to the strongest two seedlings. Now, um, when I start my seedlings, I plant three seeds in each of the peat pods. And then uh, the reason why I do that is because seeds don't germinate 100% and I want to make sure that at least something comes up, so I always overseed. When I thin these, I want to thin them down to either the strongest two or the strongest one. Um, some of these, because I'm having some damping off issues, I'm going to try to keep two where I can because I can just separate them in half later when the plants are uh, more mature. Uh, you don't want to allow more than two plants in each of the transplant containers or else they'll start to compete with each other. They're just not big enough to house two plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clippers and I'm going to decapitate the weakest seedlings and I'm going to save the strongest one or two. And when I say the strongest seedling, that doesn't necessarily mean the tallest seedling. That actually means the stockiest seedlings. You want a seedling with a very thick stem because thick stems generally mean thicker root systems. So, uh, for example, I'll zoom in on this one right here. So here we have three, one, two, three tomato plants. Um, the one in the middle is by far the thinnest. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip the one in the middle. I know it hurts to do it, but you know, you have to do what you have to do. Uh, here we have another one. All of these, they look about the same in terms of thickness, but this guy right here is actually leggier than the other ones. So I'm going to clip this one off right here. So I'm only going to clip off the ones that are getting very tall that I want to transplant right away. I'm not going to do any of the smaller ones yet because uh, I want to, if possible, wait for them to get true leaves. Like this guy right here is starting to, starting to come out. I'll just pull that one out. Generally, it's better to clip the tomatoes than it is to rip them right out. And the reason why is the roots may be intertangled. So if you were to rip one out, you may disturb the roots of the others. So it's, it's usually better to clip. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip everything down to the strongest two. All right, here you can see all of my peat pods. I removed the netting that was around the bottom. I also have them sitting on top of the appropriate tags so I know which one is which. So I just came from outside and the bucket is still smoking that has my soil in there. So it's still too warm to repot everything. So I'll give that a little bit more time. As for the remaining seedlings in here, they look to be small enough and stout enough that they can probably go another couple of days without having to be potted up. So I'm going to let them go, and I'm basically doing uh, half my seedlings right now. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I'm going to go ahead and up-pot these. The first thing I want to do is I want to verify that the soil is cool enough, and the soil is down below 90 degrees. So that means it's safe enough that I can start the potting process without scalding anything. What I want to do is I want to use this little 3x3 three three pot right here. This is 3 inches by 3 inches. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a small amount of soil on the bottom. And I'm going to pack it down to give a firm base. Not too hard, just enough to make everything firm. So I'm going to take one of my seedlings and I'm going to place it in such a way that the top will just be above the soil level. And that right there looks to be just about what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill in in this pot. I'm going to try to center the plant as best I can. And I'm going to compact the soil lightly around, firmly, lightly but firmly. And the goal is to bury this deep so the hairs that grow along the stem eventually become roots. And this is a pre-moistened soil. It's very difficult to work with a dry mix. So it's a good thing that we pre-moistened everything. 
and we're going to pack that down and because the soil is pre-moistened and it's pretty damp right now I'm actually not going to water it any further. So the end result here is that I want this I want the plant to stick out about an inch above ground. So that'll give a nice advanced deeply buried root system but enough sticking out of the top that it can be uh, it can be susceptible to the wind and it will blow around a little bit and it that that blowing around of the wind will help firm up the stem. So that right there is what we're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that to all of my plants. Just whatever you do, do not forget to tag them. This one right here is a Brandywine OTV. Here is the result of my up-potted seedlings. I had more dirt than I thought I would, so I was able to up-pot an additional three uh, peat pods. So as you can see, they are very small. They are not the size that I'd want them to be uh, when I up-pot them. Typically, I'd want there to be one set of true leaves, and these leaves that you see are just, they're false leaves. The only point of these leaves are to break through the soil so the plant can push its way up and reach the sunlight. So I'm probably about a week or two behind schedule because I went on vacation, and uh, the seedlings just got too leggy. So I'll have to deal with it. I'm going to have to hope that everything uh, turns out pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these go for a couple of days and I'm going to check on these and I will give an update and I'll let you know how the progress goes. And here we are on March 9th. Here you can see the progress of the tomato seedlings. The progress has been very poor honestly and I'll show you why it's been very poor. That is an overcast sky, and thanks to the El Nino out west, I think the NOAA classified this as the wettest year on record for the contiguous United States, and it has just been extremely cloudy, and things do not grow well without sun. I put up my pop-up greenhouse, and last year this tremendously, tremendously increased the growth of my plants, um, but the problem is it only works if it's sunny and it builds up heat with the sun. So when it's overcast like this, you're not going to get a lot of heat in the greenhouse and it's not going to do a lot to accelerate the growth of your plants. They have helped a bit. Um, these are, um, since I've sowed the seedlings, it's been about five weeks. But at this time last year, all the seedlings were twice the size because last year was so nice and clear and sunny and we're just not getting it this year. But that's okay, they will eventually catch up. Here I have a mix of um, diluted miracle Grow fertilizer. I'm going to water these seedlings the same way I watered the figs with a turkey baster, and I will link above to show you how I do that because I don't want to overwater these. Here you'll also see peppers. Uh, these peppers are way far behind. Uh, they were about four times the size as they are now last year, but I got a little bit of a late start because I went on vacation. Uh, these are a couple more pepper seedlings, and of course, these are figs that I have not yet potted or sold. Uh, that'll be a story for another time. Some of you may be saying, well, how come you just don't grow them indoors with a grow light? I'm not a big fan of grow lights. They're something that I'd only do out of necessity. Typically here in the winter, it's uh, in February and March, it's it's 65, 70 degrees, and it's pretty sunny. So I don't need grow lights. I can just bring them in at night and bring them out in the day and stick them in my pop-up greenhouse. And I don't have to deal with the electric bill and the fungus gnats that come along with a grow light. So I've never invested in one. One of the other benefits of not using a grow light is you don't have to go through the sunshine acclimation period. Um, if you just bring plants outside, the real sunlight will scald the leaves. Well, if you bring them outside every day in a greenhouse and you let them grow naturally, they get real sunlight and not artificial light, so you don't have to deal with the sun scald. But you roll the dice every year and you have an abnormally cloudy and wet year like this year, and it sets you back a little bit. But that's okay, it's not a big deal. We will catch up and I will be sure to keep you posted on the uh, progress of all of my seedlings. 
These are so many different kinds of tomatoes and basil in the bottom corner here. So many different kinds of peppers. And you've been getting periodic updates on my figs all year, and that will not stop. So I hope that you found this video very interesting and helpful. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'll be sure to update everything regularly so you can see how my garden is progressing, and hopefully you'll pick up a few tips along the way. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again next time.